everyone, my name is Paul Thurd, and this week I want to talk about the controversial topic that is conversion in audio. Now, I was going to run through like the full test that I have done. Essentially, what I've done is I've taken a video that I made three years ago where I compared an Audient ID14 to a three grand uh, Lynx Aurora N via Access Analog. Now, to be honest, I found my tests were pretty conclusive. However, I thought, you know what, as I've got the Audient Evo 16 now, I was like, this is actually a better comparison because the Lynx Aurora N is an eight channel interface. The, the Audient Evo 16 is an eight channel interface. And again, I use it for, you know, my 500 series uh, modules and stuff for conversion. So I uh, have done a test on white noise, pink noise, a Steinway piano and a full mix. I actually used uh, one of Ed Thorne's uh, fully limited mixes. I used his Can't Stop mix that we had on the podcast because it's got very good low end information, but it's got strings in there and it's got really kind of percussive uh, and quite loud brass. Uh, it's got really loud trumpets and stuff like that. So it's got a lot of high end energy in that mix, which I thought would be good. So I'll give you the conclusions of the test. The conclusion of the test was that essentially when you are buying converters for analog gear, you are essentially buying a filter. That's genuinely all you are buying. For anybody that doesn't know, there is always anti-aliasing filters in conversion. There's anti-aliasing filters in the DAC and also in the ADC. Now at 96 kilohertz, you get a much, much, much better white noise null with the Evo 16 because the filter really isn't part of the equation now because the filter is all the way up to 48 kilohertz now. The white noise null at 96 kilohertz only produced barely 0.1 dB of a difference. In reality, when you put any actual musical source through that process, especially gain staging it for analog equipment, you are not going to get any difference of more than 0.1 dB. And even if it was more than 0.1 dB, you wouldn't hear it. Even if it was 0.6 dB of a difference, you still wouldn't hear it. And also what I am going to confirm, right, knowing that again, every file is perfectly time aligned, right, for anybody moaning about my previous video, regardless of how good the Lynx filters are at 48 kilohertz, the Audient Evo 16 will have more transparent conversion at 96 kilohertz than a Lynx Aurora N at 48 kilohertz. The null proves it. That's not to say that the actual conversion of the EVO 16 is more transparent. If you take both at 96k and you measure the white noise null, I think there was 6 dB of a difference in the white noise null. So that's telling me that whatever is left, again it could be jitter, it could be whatever it is, the Lynx conversion is indeed more transparent and always will be more transparent than the EVO 16. However, that's not to say that it's more transparent than the EVO 16 at any sample rate. The fact is, as I my last video showed and this test again proves, is that the filters play a massive part. And really, if you're at 96 kilohertz, there is absolutely no difference. But again, as the test again shows, even with the filtering and the high-end phase shift caused by uh, the EVO 16, which is more than the phase shift in the high end caused by the anti-aliasing filters in the links, there's not even 0.1 dB of a difference on a fully limited mix. And that is it. It's pointless. You don't genuinely need to spend so much money on conversion for analog equipment. However, that's not to say that all conversion is pointless. And this is where it's going to get very controversial and uh, it's just going to be a bit of a shit show after this. So I'm buckling up <laughs> and I'm preparing for the shit show in the comments. How I can describe the difference to you is almost like to the audience DAC to say speakers is that there's a haze over the mix where in the topping there's this separation. And many people may ask, Paul, what's the difference between the DAC going to analog to ADC compared to DAC to speakers? What you've got to remember is that there's not really an amplification stage in the when you're running through analog gear. DAC to ADC, there isn't really an amplification stage needed. But when it comes to speakers, you need to take that line level signal and what do you do on your interface? You dial up your output knob, don't you? So you're having to amplify the signal to be able 
to drive the speakers correctly. And I always kind of see almost like audience conversion and budget that conversion, almost like there's this haze over the mix and I struggle to, to hear in between the instruments. It's kind of almost like the difference between like proper dry rough recordings to like a full mix when you've got all your verbs and your delays added in. If you go from say the finished mix to like say the rough, you'll hear all the space between the instruments and it, everything can sound a bit disjointed. That's kind of how I hear that conversion on a more subtle level. Now to explain that, it's incredibly difficult because I was doing like some research and again, it's one of the reasons why this video's taken so long is that when you get into the intricacies of DACs, even though they, most of them are using the same fucking ESS DAC chips, the implementation of the DAC is what's really, really, really important. Like, honestly, don't even get me started on jitter. Like, honestly, see when you get into jitter, honestly, like, genuinely, you get into the realms where we're talking picoseconds, and it's commonly understood and accepted that in most cases, <laughs> if you have more than 20 picoseconds of, like, jitter, it's normally going to cause audible jitter distortions or whatever. You're going to hear a difference. A picosecond is a fucking trillionth of a second, thousandth of a fucking nanosecond. But genuinely, the science is that we are genuinely, do we do need to actually worry about fucking picoseconds and jitter and timing and accuracies. And it does make sense to me, you know what I mean? If, if any of this is creating, you know, fucking phase noise, fucking modulation, or it's just creating some factor of noise, and again, your transients aren't being perfectly recreated, then again, it is going to impact your spatialization. It's going to affect where you hear certain things. That topping DX7 Pro Plus measures better than your Lynxes, than your Prisms. One of the best on the market, and it's £700. And, you know, I genuinely do believe that that money is better invested in your monitoring than anything else. When you think about DAC to ADC, it's fucking analog gear. Just the difference of <laughs> passing through the gear alone is probably going to absolutely surpass the difference of the DAC to ADC conversion. What you do with the analog gear is way, way, way more important than a fucking a 0 0.1 dB difference that you're never going to be able to hear. Where with your monitoring, it's so important because every decision that you make is going to be based on what comes out of those fucking two speakers out your headphones. Ed has an X6, X16, and again, like when it comes to the X6, we all think that the X6 conversion sounds shit, but the DAC to ADC is fucking impeccable, but the DAC conversion sounds muddy for whatever reason, we, we can't explain it. Again, Ed's got the X16, and he says the X16 conversion, DAC conversion, is better through his PSIs than X6. So he says X16 is better than X6. But the topping DX7 Pro Plus, he's like, fucking hell, hands down better conversion with my PSIs than the X16. Get yourself in a position where you could get, you know, a, the converter that you've got just now and you could get access to, say, like a Lavery Gold or a Lynx Helo or, again, a topping and compare it. And if you don't hear any difference, crack on, live your best life, right? There's no point worrying about differences that you can't hear. But I do believe it's worthwhile getting yourself in the position to see if you can hear those differences. And for those people that say, but I'm telling you right now, I can hear with my ears that the DAC to ADC conversion is better. Just remember that, and this is going to break your little noggin and I'll leave this with you, just to be a dick. When you listen to your print of DAC to ADC, you are never listening to the DAC to ADC conversion. You are listening to the DAC to ADC conversion through another round of DAC conversion, which has been amplified <laughs> for your speakers, which have got their own relationship with the DAC. So theoretically, it is impossible to actually listen to a DAC to ADC pass-through. It's physically impossible because you need a DAC <laughs> to be able to play that signal back. So. Yeah, let that kind of sit on your noggin. Uh, yeah, there it is. Go nuts in the comments down below. Tell me I'm a crazy and uh, audiophile nut job, whatever. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm living my best life. That's all that matters. Just don't go spending money on things that you don't need, right? If you don't think you need a good expensive DAC like the top end, just fucking don't buy it. Live your best life. Live by your own rules. And I'll see you whenever I see you.